Hi guys, welcome back to the Max Spence Business Podcast. Today I have a very special guest. His name is David. Uh, he's a real estate investor. I'll actually let him introduce, uh, introduce himself. Uh, it's great having you on the show, David. Hey, Maxwell. Thanks for having me, man. Awesome. Awesome. So why don't we start with a little bit about your background of uh, who you are, um, you know, business, life, all, all that sort of area. Business life, man. <laughs> I, could, I could talk for a couple hours, but I'll keep it short. Um, <laughs> I guess 60 seconds who I am. Uh, I'm a real estate investor. I'm 24 years old. I started my first business when I was 13, a uh, serial entrepreneur. Uh, um, I started buying real estate though when I was 19 turning 20. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I listened to a bunch of podcasts. I caught the bug. And so um, I mainly buy and build apartment communities, uh, primarily in Texas. We're based in Austin. And so um, I've bought almost a thousand apartment units in the last four years. Um, I raised capital from investors to do this and I give them a return on their investment. I get a piece of sweat equity for doing it. Uh, I've just started kind of buying some of my own deals now uh, with my own capital. Uh, I also own a software company that's a real estate acquisitions based software company called Real Estate Lab. It's just in the startup phase. So that'll be launching by the end of the year. And uh you have a couple other things and a couple of Amazon stores, stuff like that. So, uh, but mainly real estate's, it's my main gig and I'm a purebred entrepreneur. I love it. I love helping other entrepreneurs. Uh, real estate is in my blood and, uh, it's, it's all I do. So I'm glad awesome, to be here man. with you. That's awesome. That, that, that's a great intro, man. So that <laughs> you're 24 years old, that, that right off the bat is crazy. You're 24 years old and almost have a, a you know, a thousand units of uh, apartment, well, a thousand units of apartment complex, well, of apartment complexes, but units inside of those uh, complexes. Um, and you're also starting a software company. So you were 19 when you got, 19 turning 20, got into, that's, you sort of started into real estate. Um, so what did you actually start off with buying? Yeah. So when I really first started real estate, I mean, I got my real estate license. I thought I had to, you know, as a living beliefs, I thought I had to, um, flip houses and wholesale or whatever before I got into bigger stuff. But I always wanted to do large commercial apartments uh, and, you know, commercial real estate apartments, developments. And so, um, you know, my first deal was a 12 unit complex. I spent all my time looking for deals, talking to brokers, uh, underwriting, running numbers, my little spreadsheet model, and just figuring out how, how does this all work, right? How does, you know, what, money comes in, where does it go? What, what are the operating expenses? How does this thing work? And how does each, you know, every complex is a living, breathing business in itself. In itself. And so that's kind of how I looked at it. And I had some experience, you know, I was studying finance at the time. I had done some internships and in investment banking and auditing. And so I, you know, I had some experience with financial statements and numbers and stuff like that. So, um, you know, really that, that's kind of how I got my start. I was looking at deals, running numbers. I bought a 12 unit apartment complex. Well, actually two, I bought two 12 units at the same time. I went under contract on them within like two weeks of each other because one wasn't enough. So I bought, <laughs> it was 24 units that I bought and uh, I closed in early 2017 on those. This is my first two deals and I raised capital. I had, I had like a couple of grand in my bank account. You know, I was, I was a broke college kid, like every other so kid in college that, that this is the absolutely crazy bit because I, I i've seen what you've done uh, over the past probably i'd probably say six to eight months i've sort of just followed you a bit and seen what you've done um and i first heard about your story on bigger pockets I, I read one of the forms uh just about real estate uh investing and stuff like that and i heard your story and i was like holy crap this guy this is insane so you, you know 19 years you know 19 years old and you don't have you don't have a lot of money. How did you one raise cap, get people to believe in you and to give them to, to, you know, to give you to, for them to give you capital and also to convince brokers that you're ser you're a serious buyer that, you know, you can close on, you know, a two 12 unit deal, like two 12 unit buildings, which are probably yeah. not really cheap. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, there were, well, cheap for, in terms of 12 units, they were about 45,000 a door. I spent what, five, five fifty, five sixty on each of them. Um, you know, but that's a big property. I was 20 years old and I, was, I closed on over a million dollars in, in property value there. And, and how did I, you know, that's a good question. I talked to brokers, you know, in the beginning to me, I felt, I felt, I had confidence one, because I had somebody lined up to sign the loans. Um, I didn't have the money ready and money raised already. You know, I, I that was something I'd figured out after I got the deals under contract. So, hold on, so, sorry. I, I, uh, 
So you, you had, you, so you already had a loan guarantor. How did you go about finding that loan loan guarantor to actually, you know, sign on that dotted line that they'll be like, so for a loan guarantor that they'll be response, sorry to interrupt you, uh, but the, 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 they'll be, uh, so they'll be liable for the loan and the property, right? Yeah, it was a, it was my original mentor in like wholesaling and flipping. He'd done a bunch of residential real estate. And so, you know, I was like, Hey, I'm going to go look for some multifamily deals and, and we'll, you know, you'll sign a loan. We'll, partner on it. And that's how I did my first couple of deals. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. so for anyone out there that's looking to do the same thing, you know, network, go hit some real estate events, hit some meetups, go find someone who's got net worth and, and uh, uh, liquidity to be able to sign on a loan. And we went to just a local bank, a regional bank. Um, and that's, that's how I financed his first couple of deals. But I had that lined up. I didn't have the money lined up. Um, but in terms of like talking to brokers and stuff, really in the beginning, the confidence for me came from like, I knew I ran the numbers and I knew the numbers. If I could throw it in a spreadsheet, I see how they're currently performing for the past couple of years. Uh, I, I feel like multifamily is fairly predictable. I mean, nobody can pr predict coronavirus, right? Yeah. But, you know, which is weird because we've actually done really well through coronavirus. Actually, some of our properties have done better. Uh, but nobody can predict that kind of stuff. But if you're conservative in general and you say, hey, these are where the rents are, but here's where all the competition is and maybe we can get our rents up and here's where our expenses are. Here's where the competition or here's what, what's average in the industry for managing property. Here's where repairs and maintenance should be. Here's what your management fee should be. Here's where taxes are going to go reassessment. I mean, all these things are fairly, fairly predictable and you can find that out either through online research, a mentor, or talking to a property management company locally and saying, Hey, what do you think you can run these? You know, what do you think this thing will operate at in terms of expenses and your expense ratio and whatnot? So um, knowing all those numbers made it very easy for me to go to a broker and say, uh, actually in the beginning, I kind of acted like I did have all the money lined up and I didn't. I talked to brokers and say, Hey, I know, you know, I've got, I've got a cash buyer backing me we're ready to go. You know, I've got all the money in an account sitting there, whatever, you know, I got a proof of funds from somebody and that's what I would use. And, you know, I didn't actually have the money sitting in my bank account, but um, you know, I guess there's a little bit of fake it till you make it. And <laughs> I knew that if I, you know, I'm the type of person that I'm just going to figure it out. Right. I'm, I'm resourceful. I'm an entrepreneur. If I get a deal on a contract, I'm going to through hell or high water, we're going to make it happen. And so I think that's a mentality you have to have if you're 20 years old and trying to buy multi-million dollar properties, you almost have to have a little bit of that. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, otherwise you're just, you're, you're, I don't want to say you're going to get crushed, but you're going to have, um, you're going to have your spirits crushed because you're going to find that you're not going to get a lot of attention from people. I, I threw on my suit and I made myself look professional and I went out and toured the deals and I talked the talk and I sounded like I knew what I was doing, even though maybe I didn't. And so uh, that, image at first helped me get started right and, and, then, and then I actually grew into what I was projecting I grew into you know actually knowing and now I'm, I, I consider myself an expert in that area and so um you know but at first you gotta kind of you gotta kind of do that yeah, yeah. And that's okay the, 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 that's awesome that you just had this mentality that you know no matter what I'm gonna these properties are mine <laughs> and, yeah and I'm gonna get exactly them. <laughs> yeah so, you have to man you have to so okay so you, you know you you crush that, you get your first deal done. And, and then pretty much from that, did, uh, did that just pretty much just get the pretty much wheel turning and you just started just going and started doing more deals or so what happened after that? Yeah. I mean, just picked up momentum right after I closed on those. I had a deal. I sent a mailer out to a guy on a hundred unit property with 96 units. And uh, he responded, he owned over a billion dollars in real estate. Um, but he responded and um, you know, he just kind of connected with my story and he said, I reminded him of, himself when he was my age. So he gave me a shot, bought a nine, I bought this 97 unit or 96 unit co complex uh, in Michigan. Um, I bought it for 4.3 a year. I just sold it last summer of uh, 2019 for almost $7 million. So we crushed wow. it on that deal. Uh, and so, you know, after you, after I did a couple of these, you learn more. I, I actually lived that 96 unit. I lived in it. I house hacked it, you know, per se. That's that might've been the article <laughs> you read. Cause I think that's the only bigger pockets yeah. article I've ever written. Yeah, <laughs> um, I was hacking that 96 unit deal. And so, uh, you know, I, I just, uh, I, it's all, I, it's all I've done for the past four years. Um, you know, almost four and a half years now is literally it's multifamily. Like I wake up and I work 15 hours a day looking for apartments, managing my current apartments, talking to people about apartments, financing them, raising money. 
And like, if you imagine if you do that all day, every day for years, you're going to get good at it and learn a lot very quickly. Yeah. And make mistakes. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's, that's kind of how it's happened. That that's crazy. That, 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 that blows that like that blows me away about that. So you, uh, that, that's crazy to hear. Cause like that you're like, I haven't heard any, but any other stories about, you know, like 20 year olds just going in and being like, you know what, I, I feel like, you know what, I, I'm going to figure out how to buy, you know, a $4 million property. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's cool because I've, I've fortunate, I've been very fortunate. And over the past couple of years, I've met some really cool people who are young and in their twenties and are doing similar things. And so um, it's, it's been awesome because, you know, part of what I like to do is connect with other like-minded young individuals. And so I actually threw an event a month ago during all this COVID craziness. It was, uh, um, uh, when was it? It was, you know, in May, uh, or no, sorry, early June. And, um, I had about 35 people out here to Austin. I booked this whole hotel and I called it 20 in their twenties. And it was all my 20 some year old friends who are all crushing it in real estate syndicating or buying. I have a kid oh, really? 24. Yeah, he buys self storage and buys and builds self storage. He's 24 years old. I have another friend who syndicated a couple hundred apartments. He's 25 years old. So, you know, just a great group of people. Um, but, uh, you know, I, there, there's not many of us. We're, you know, us young 20 year olds, we're, uh, I guess we're a rare breed. But what I like to show with that is that it's so possible to yourself and anyone else who's young and who's interested in getting into the space is like, if I could do it, anyone can do it, man. There's, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm nothing special other than hard work. Yeah, that that, that is true. So, um, did did you have uh, did you have any uh, any failures at like the beginning when you're going and stuff that you had to cut overcome or like you, you fall and smack your face oh, a few yeah. times? <laughs> oh my god, yeah, yeah, dude, tons of failures. Like nothing, nothing ever goes the way you plan it to. But you know what's weird about me is I really don't. I I I, I almost couldn't bring up a. a you know, a list of failures. Cause I really try not to focus on that stuff. I'm always like uh, uh, solution focused, but yeah, I mean, there's countless times where it's like, okay, I said the wrong thing and I turned off an investor and they like didn't want to invest with me or, or I talked to a broker and I messed this up and like the deal fell through and I didn't get the deal or I didn't put in an offer quick enough and it fell apart or we got an offer accepted, but then I was too slow to get the purchase agreement negotiated or I was too picky over little terms and so somebody else swoops along and swoop, swipes the deal from me, right? Like, I guess there's countless things like that that happen, but, um, so you, you know, you it's all great. Talk, They're, yeah, you, you fail forward. Learning experience and experience that's going to help you grow in the future. Dude, I eat that shit for breakfast. Those are wins to me. I, like, <laughs> I love the failures. And they happen all the I still fail all the time and it happens. And it's like, okay, as long as you're willing to pick your head up, and figure it out and and you know just don't slow down uh, what i learned is um i talk about this a lot i speak about this is uh you just stay in emotionally level like you're gonna you're gonna fail and that's a given and you have to accept that and you understand that yes you will fail and that's okay and then once you get over that fact you fail and 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 you can push through it so much quicker. You don't let it get you too low or too high, right? And you just kind of stay emotionally steady. And um, you know, you really uh, you really push through a lot of the slowdowns that a lot of people. You know, it's a stressful thing being an entrepreneur. It's not easy yeah. running a multi million dollar business, especially when you know you come from nothing. So uh, and you have employees now and all this stuff. So you just gotta you gotta learn to 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 love the failure. It's just a part of the game, man. So, so from what you said so far, you, you, you got really good at the, the underwriting part. Is, is that what you'd say? You, you got really yeah. good at that. And that's what it, so when you came to, did you, so did you actually do the whole deal or did you partner? Like, did you have a little bit of like a team member or something that was with you that like another dude or another woman, uh, that was like, Hey, I know really a lot of stuff about, uh, the, like construction or anything like that. Or was it, you just like, you just did the underwriting and then. You raised the capital. You did everything yourself. I did it all. Yeah, I did raise the capital. I did the, you know, underwrite it from the beginning, negotiated. I mean, I did, my partner who signed on the loan helped with some of that stuff, negotiating the purchase agreement, stuff like that. But uh, in general, like when I bought that '96 unit, I was 21. I moved in. I I hired and fired employee the employees on site. You know, we had some shitty employees, so I had to get rid of them and hire new ones. When the on-site manager quit in the morning of and didn't give me two weeks notice, I stepped in and started on-site managing the property, overseeing, you know, 
the maintenance person. I leased the units. I did all that and put the bills into the software. Like I did it all. And so I've sat in all these roles now, which is great. Uh, you know, I managed a half million dollar renovation on that project. Uh, so, um, you know, I've raised to date almost $20 million. So I've, I've sat in all these different roles, which is great. Um, and, yeah. and so I suggest to a lot of people getting started, start small. Because if I had started trying to go in to do a hundred unit deal, I would have probably had to partner with somebody like myself now or a bigger firm that, uh, you know, uh, would have taken and done most of that work and I would have sat on the sidelines. So um, by starting with the 12 unit, I got to do all the work. I did everything. Right, I got to literally sit in the driver's seat and do the PPM and raise the money and learn the documents and learn the loan process. And so by doing that, I just, I learned a ton and it, and it, it really just put me on a fast track and allowed me to partner up with my current business partner today who owned a, who owned a three, $300 million portfolio of apartments. He's 52 years old, right? He's um, twice my age, but he, saw my experience because I had all that experience and leverage that allowed me to get into a partnership like this. Yeah. That, 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 that does sound pretty crazy to be, you know, partner partnering with somebody who's twice your age and has this huge portfolio, but you, you've brought, you understand what you're doing. You, you're able to bring so much value to him that he's like, yeah, this is right. This is the guy I want to, you know, I want to exactly. partner with and I want to do business with, which is, which is insane, man. It's crazy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what the, the really point of this podcast is I really want to get to, um, helping people, you know, get into the real, like getting into syndication and how do they do that and how you did it through steps through steps. So, you, you know, like the raising capital, all that sort of stuff. Um, so let, let, okay, let's jump back to, uh, your next. So like after you got that 24 unit, how did you go about getting the next, uh, the next, you know, um, apartment complex? So after I did those first two, uh, that was, the next one was the 96 units. I sent a mail or just a piece of mail saying, hey, I see you own this property here. I'm interested in making you an offer. Um, give me a call. He gave me a call. Uh, talked about it, negotiated. I went, toured it, ran the numbers. Uh, we kind of went back and forth and, um, you know, I put it under contract. And uh, when was this? Mid, I think I closed in like September of 2017 on that deal. So it's right away after I closed on those 24 units in March, 2017, I put it under contract and it took me a couple of months to close it. And okay. so I just went right from the, the first one to the next one. I was like, ready. I was like, okay, I've got this <laughs> momentum. Now I need to carry it. Right. And that's, what's going to help you grow. So yeah, I went right from doing that to doing the next deal. Uh, man, that, that, that's crazy. So uh, how, so the, you got these, so how many other deals did you actually underwrite before you got these deals? Or was this like, you just Hundreds. like, Hundreds, yeah. Hundreds. So you, I looked at every single deal on market, off market, made tons of offers. And it's like anyone who's in real estate or has been in real estate for a long time knows that deals come and go. There's always another deal around the corner, right? Things are always changing. The market may be hot, but if you're looking, there's always a deal out there. And so, um, and, and a deal, a deal, right, looks different to everyone. Um, to some people, what may be a great deal is a terrible deal to others. And so, uh, you know, I just pound the pavement and I'm always looking and I've got a pipeline of deals at all times. And we're trying to, you know, looking at deals, seeing what we can make work, uh, what doesn't work, what we want to offer on, what we don't. And it's really, you know, people that do the most deals, it's like, okay, you either have really deep pockets and you can overpay for stuff or you put in the time and you look at a lot of deals and you really find the good ones. And so uh -huh. and you get, you pay the right price. And so, yeah. uh, you know, your growth as a, as a real estate investor, real estate is a deal based business. You're, you're either out there doing deals or you're not doing anything. Right. So, um, you, you have to spend a lot of time looking for those. And so that's what I did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that makes sense. So you got that 90. So, all right. So you got the 96 unit and then pretty much did you just start you just kept scaling 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 uh when did you uh so when did you get into new construction yeah so i did a couple other deals after that uh mainly in texas moved the business down to austin where my business partner glenn is uh and then uh we bought a piece of land it's like three and a half acres about a year ago um just bought it cash we uh got it entitled 
and approved for 50 apartments. And uh, we are actually breaking ground in the next four weeks on it. So I'm very excited okay. about that. Early August, first week of August, we're breaking ground. Uh, we've raised all the capital for it. We've got financing lined up, construction loan. And so uh, really why we got into it is because in Austin, where I live now is Austin, Texas. What we noticed is 70s and 80s apartments are selling for anywhere from 110 to 150,000 a unit, like expensive wow. stuff, right? And most yeah. apartments I buy, B and C class are like, you know, 55 to 80,000 a unit, just, you know, it's the type of stuff we yeah. normally buy. And so now I'm looking at that same product in a market like Austin, which is just absolutely booming and on fire. This, uh, you know, stuff selling for almost twice that. So when we looked at the numbers, we're like, okay, we can go and build something for about B class product. We're not building high end product. This is average B class product. We're building for about 135,000 a unit all in with the land. And so if I could build for the price, I could buy 40 year old product. Why wouldn't we build? And so that's yeah. the thought process that went into it. You know, we'll build it. It'll be worth almost 180 to 200,000 a unit uh, within two years once we lease it up. So uh, that's, that's the thought process. Um, I'm very market specific and, and the, the site that we're building on is five minutes from my house. This is very close by. Uh, I could literally walk there. And so uh, it just kind of made sense. It was just natural progression. We're still, I mean, that's a very, that's a small part of our business. We're still um, mainly buying existing stuff. Uh, however, uh, the new build is very attractive and it's something we're starting to line up. You know, we've got about 100, 150 unit new development we've lined up right now as well. That's an owner land contribution type of deal. Uh, and so uh, we're starting to line up a couple more so that we're going to do at least one of these, maybe two of these a year and just keep growing that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That, that, that's pretty cool. That's, and, and, and you're 24. <laughs> I'm 24. <laughs> that's, yep. that's crazy. That's like, yeah. you know, the majority of people are coming out like they just got out of university for, they've just been out of university for two years. <laughs> yeah. It's great. I mean, you know, everyone takes a different path and some people start earlier. Some people start later. I was just at a car dealership. I'm looking at buying a, I like, I'm a sports car guy. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm looking at, I'm looking at buying a Lamborghini. <laughs> and I was talking to the guy and I was like, who's the youngest guy you've ever had in here? And he's like, S youngest self-made person was 19. And he bought a, you know, $300,000 car cash. He's like a options trader or something like that. Right. So, you know, everybody, and then that makes me feel like, man, I'm five years behind. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it just, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, everyone's at a different place in life. And, yeah. and I always say, you're always exactly where you're supposed to be. You know, I, I could, I could get in a terrible car accident tomorrow and lose both my legs and brain function. And I could never be able to do business again. Right. Like and that could happen. And it's like, okay, like everyone was saying, man, I wish I was where David's at, but now, now you don't. So, and so, you know, I always say you're always exactly where you're supposed to be. I'm very, I'm clearly very blessed and I'm very grateful to be where I'm at. Um, but I've also put in the work to back it up. Right. Yeah. I've earned it. And I come so, for nothing. So, yeah. um, so, you know, it, 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 it is, it is what it is, but it's fun. I love what I do. <laughs> That's awesome. So I, I, I sort of want to talk about, uh, so like, uh, emotionally, like how, so how did you get over your nerves to do this or to go into these situations? Like, do you still get nervous when you, you're taking on these new construction projects or a new big deal? Or is it sort of, it's just gotten to a point right now where it's just like, it's just normal and it's just, you know what you need to do to get it done. Yeah, I think there's always a part of it that's like, okay, this is maybe a little unknown, but I don't think I've ever really been fully nervous about doing any of these deals. And I think maybe in the beginning, it was a little bit of naive, naivete, or I was maybe a little ignorant just because I was so young and so gung-ho and excited. But um, I've almost never been nervous. And, and I think it's because I know the numbers. And it's like, yeah, there's things that can go wrong, for sure. And there's unknowns that could go wrong. You know, I could get hit by a tornado property could or whatever but like okay i've got insurance or what happens if you know my expenses or renovations are higher well okay i'm gonna raise a rainy day fund to cover that uh if something were to go wrong and so there's things that you can do to always mitigate risk and so i'm a very logical analytical calculated type of person so i take i take calculated risks as long as i have the right safe safety nets in there uh to cover myself um, i feel very comfortable 
And so, uh, you know, and I work, and the other thing is why I don't feel that is because I, I literally only work with people I really, I highly trust. I don't do business with anyone I don't like. I don't do business with anyone. I don't have to do business with anybody. I kind of get to pick and choose, which is the cool part. Yeah. And so, um, and, and anyway, really anyone can. So I don't do business with shady people. I do business with good hearted people that have good intentions and we all want to uh, win together and, and, and do right for our, by our investors. And so, um, and so I sleep really well at night because of that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's, that's the main thing I, I, I had, uh, I, I don't know if you heard of him. I, I had Bruce, uh, Bruce Lynch on a few podcasts ago. He, he's, uh, he was the founder of, uh, like Tweed and he was a former CEO, of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, canopy growth. And he was like, yeah, he says, uh, well, it, it was funny. Cause, um, I, I can't remember the exact question I asked him, but he, he was saying that he says, if you, if you want to make a lot of money, uh or, or he says like i don't know for he says if you want to make a lot of money really quick he says uh, be a criminal because he says you can make a lot of money really quick in that he yeah want to if you want to sleep well at night and have something that you love to do and you know provide value to people and uh he says then be an entrepreneur yeah i agree yeah. absolutely and do business with good people my business partner who's my his name is clinton gonzalez uh he's one of my greatest mentors too um you know, he always says people do business with people they like to do business with. And at the end of the day, that's how it goes, right? And so there are people out there that are shady. I've worked with them. I've gotten screwed by them. And that's why I don't work with those kind of people anymore because uh, I've learned the hard way. But, uh, you know, you, you get to choose. And so do you want to be a little <laughs> and make quick money? Okay, good luck to you. You won't be working with me. If you want to be in it for the long run and you want to, you know, be a good person, um, we'll, we'll still make a lot of money together. We'll have a fun time doing it, but you know, I'm going to sleep really well at night knowing that I've always done the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I've just got three more questions with, uh, two more questions. Is that good for you for time? Oh yeah. We're good, man. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, the first question is how did you learn uh, everything that you did, was there like, uh, did you re did you learn it through books? Did you learn it through, uh, certain websites that you went to, or did you learn it from just actually surrounding yourself with the people that are doing it and trying to, you know, just doing it yourself and trial and error? Yeah, I'd say overall, if I were to just compile everything from the start, I'd say 20% books and podcasts, uh, and ed online education, 40%, um, mentors and and people and uh educators that i've learned from and the other 40 percent i'd say is by doing being a practitioner um i'm a learn by doing type of guy so okay yeah, yeah. yeah the, 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 that, that's what i'm sort of because otherwise you get stuck a lot of people will spend you'll spend two years reading books and going to conferences and listening to podcasts which is great but when are you gonna actually do something about it yeah. Yeah. The, the, that's what I've sort of found from uh, the majority of entrepreneurs that are taking it to a high level quickly and moving up. It's, they just, you know, they jump into it and they say they have no clue how to do it, but they say that they, they know that they're competent and they're just going to figure it out. And then they go through and they just figure it out. And I think a lot of people, I, I think that comes from fear. A lot of people don't want to mess it up or maybe it's, it comes back from, I think it comes back from like school and stuff. It's like, you don't want to get that answer wrong. You really like whatever you do, yeah. you don't want to get that answer wrong. You really don't want you to gotta be a, you gotta take a risk though at the end of the yeah. day, right? You've gotta be willing to lose it all to gain it all. Uh, you know, not not even lose it all, right? You take calculate like I said, take calculated risks. But if you're not willing to do that, you're just never gonna get anywhere. So Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that is very true. So um so uh my second question is so let's say there's somebody who's young, you may be, maybe he knows 16 or 18 or 19 or 20 or what, however old, and they're looking, they're like, hey, I want to get straight into, um, you know, the 100 unit buildings. I, I, I don't want to do single family homes. I want to get like, I want to do what David's doing. Uh, you know, I want to be buying, yeah. syndicating and doing these deals. So what, like, if, if you had five pieces of good advice, what would it be for somebody in the, the starting phase? Five pieces? Right, I'll give five pieces. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> So I'd say the first thing is don't go for a hundred plus unit building right away. Go for something that's like 20 to 50 units learn. Uh, you'll be able to, you'll get more done. You'll be able to do more of the work. You'll be able to learn every piece of the, the of the deal. Um, so start a little smaller. Um, the other thing is you don't need to do single family before you do multifamily. I did a little bit, but I jumped right in. You can go big. 
Uh, like I said, from the first point, don't go too big. Second thing, find a, or third thing, find a mentor or mentors, uh, put down the books, find a mentor and start actually working, which I think leads to my next point, which is like all out hustle. If you're not willing to put in hard work, you're never going to get anywhere. I've worked 80 to hundred hours a week for the last four years. And that's the answer to the question. How do you get to where you're at is because I literally eat, sleep and breathe real estate. That's all I do. Um, and then the last thing is you gotta love it in my opinion. I mean, you can do something you don't love as like a means to an end, but if you don't love it, like you're just going to burn out and you're going to like, I'm not, I'll, I'll never burn out in this cause I love it. It's just so enjoyable to me. And now I'm starting a software company and doing all this, you know, so it's like, I love the industry. I love real estate. It's fun for me. And it's just, it's, it's, you know, if you love it, you're going to be successful in it. I think. That's true. That's a, well, thank you for that. that. That was some great advice. So uh, my last question is um, what does happiness mean to you? Well, and, and your life will, what, what provides you the most happiness or what does it really mean to you? I think people, the right people. I mean, a couple things. So, you know, people like I'm, I, I, I've, surra- I've just like changed my circle up in the last couple of years. And like the people I surround myself with, I absolutely love, you know, friends, family, uh, mentors, business partners, people I work with, just awesome people. And that is great for me because every day I get to w- wake up and work with people that I enjoy working with. And they're also passionate about it. Um, you know, I think the other part of happiness for me is freedom. I had a goal. I want to be able to work any from anywhere in the world on a laptop. And it took me about three, three and a half years to get there. But, you know, I, I can I, right now, if I wanted to go, you know, let's say, let's say if COVID wasn't a thing <laughs> right now, if I want to go to Fiji and work for two weeks, I could do it. Right. And so for me, freedom was a big, and you know, that'll change one day having kids and family and stuff. But right now while I'm young in my twenties, one of my goals was like freedom, right? I want to be able to do what I want when I want. And so I kind of designed this lifestyle where I can do that and, and real estate and passive income and capital gains and all that has just allowed me to do that. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, uh, we're, well, we're coming to the end here. Uh, so what's next for uh, the 24 year old David? <laughs> Well, 24-year-old David turns 25 in exactly a month. So, uh, nice. you know, my... Early, early happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, my goal is uh, to continue. Yeah, I want to build a multi-billion dollar real estate portfolio over the next couple decades. Um, I'm getting into the software industry. I built, uh, uh, it's a multifamily specific acquisition software platform called Real Estate Lab. And that is in the works. I just, I'm raising an angel million dollar angel round of funding for the software. I'm almost done with that. Um, And so uh, the software's in the works. It's going to be done by uh, first quarter of 2021. Uh, We're going to launch it. It's going to help you. It's going to automate the underwriting process. So people who don't really feel familiar or comfortable with underwriting deals, it's going to make it so simple for them. Um, And then for people who are more sophisticated, it's going to have a lot of great features that help them do it even quicker. Right? So uh, it's a multifamily acquisitions software. Um, real estate lab coming out next year. That is going to be huge for me over the next two years. I uh, really want to grow that, change the industry up. Um, and then I, I want to just keep having fun. I'm like I said, I'm a car guy. I like, you know, getting into more sports cars and I like traveling a lot. I have a girlfriend, uh, you know, we like traveling. So, um, you know, all that stuff, just, just having fun, being happy, being fulfilled. I, I like donating, giving back. You see on my hat, disabled outdoorsman. Uh, that's my buddy's, um, organization he runs that helps kids with disabilities go out to take some out hunting on a ranch in san antonio and it gives wow. kids an opportunity who just who feel who feel like they are um you know putting undue burden on people by having fun and doing activities right they feel like they're a burden a lot of times so he he brings them out and does gives them these opportunities awesome activities where it's like hey you're not a burden you know we have ada accessible cars we have uh, ADA accessible deer blinds and they take some out hunting and they just freaking love it. So, you know, things like that. I love helping people and giving back. So all that. Awesome. That's awesome. For, for your, uh, for your car, what, what's your, uh, what's your favorite car? 
Uh, I, so I've always been a Lamborghini guy just from a kid. I've always like, it's the thing. It's like, I want a Lamborghini. That's something I've always wanted. And so uh, I wanted to do it last year. I put it off. I bought a Corvette. And so I love that. But I'm looking now to upgrade. I, I think I want to get a, I want to get a Huracan. Um, so I'm looking at a couple of different models. I was just there today actually looking at some. So, so we'll see. I don't know. I might put it off a little bit more. Uh, I, I always kind of dangle stuff like that in front of my face. It's like, you know, I've got a lot of different goals, um, but I want to, you know, I kind of dangle it in front of me because if, you know, if I push it out another year, I'd be like, okay, now I got another year. I'll keep working for it. I don't need it right now, obviously. So, yeah. Um, just, but, just to yeah. motivate you to, to yeah, you know. just motivation, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I got time. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, the, Thanks for coming on the show, David. Uh, it's, it's been awesome talking with you. You're, you're an awesome guy to, to listen to and have, hear, hear the advice that you give. Um, that, that's amazing. Um, and I wish you all the best, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate that, Maxwell. Thanks. It's been fun. Good talking to you.